Greetings YouTubers, I'm Rick the Tech Enthusiast here with the next Elgu lesson number 18, Water Level Detection Sensor Module. In this lesson, we'll check out the Water Level Detection Sensor Module that is provided with the Elgu kit. We'll build and configure a simple circuit that is provided in the tutorial to demonstrate the functionality. So let's start building. The Water Level Detection Sensor Module that is included in the kit is a transistor amplifying circuit with printed circuit board exposed traces to measure a resistance that changes with the depth of the water's level. This value is converted to an electrical signal that we measure with the Arduino's analog digital converter. Primarily, this module is to measure water level like rainfall, water tanks, or water leakage. As you can see from the schematic diagram, the operation of this module is simple. If the board has water or other fluid covering the exposed traces, the resistance is decreased, which increases the current flow driving the base of the transistor and thus providing the maximum output analog value on pin S. The resistors are there to protect against shorts. The resistor and the LED parallel to the transistor turns on if the voltage is just applied. The output range is from zero the lowest reading, to 1023, the highest reading. A board completely submerged with a liquid will have a reading of about 123 by the Arduino. If the board is halfway covered, a reading is about 512. A quarter of the way covered, and we'll get a reading about 256. And if there's no liquid at all, uh, we'll get something near zero. However, it's important to note that clean tap water doesn't conduct as well as water with something dissolved in it. The pins are S, plus, and minus. S is the signal or sensor output pin, which we will use to connect to the analog input. The plus is five volts VCC and minus is ground. However, it is important to note that as Andreas Spies mentions in his video, modules like this one with exposed traces will probably not last long. The traces will eventually corrode or dissolve. A capacitive sensor would serve you better. I highly recommend you watch Andreas Spies video on why most Arduino soil moisture sensors suck. He does a great job comparing various modules, including a capacitive sensor. I'll include a link in the show notes below. The tutorial and the data sheet, which by the way, is just another tutorial, have additional information that you may wish to look over and it wouldn't hurt to check it out. For this lesson, we'll need the following items from your kit. The Elgo Arduino Uno R3 board. The water level detection sensor module three female to male jumper wires. On page 32, you'll see the following schematic. A jumper will be connected between the output pin S and the analog pin A0. Then they're just power and ground. Super simple. On page 133, you'll see the wiring diagram with a photo on page 134. Hmm. Not sure, but it looks to me that the transistor and the resistors are submerged under the water in that cup. I don't think that's a good idea. Anyhow, we're not going to be using the breadboard. We're going to directly connect the jumpers between the Arduino and the water level detection sensor module. Okay, let's jump to the code. As before, we'll load the recommended sketch provided in the tutorial. Go to the file menu item, select open, and browse to where you save the Elegoo files. Then under your language, code, under lesson 18, water level detection sensor module, water underscore level, and open the water underscore level dot INO file. Looking at the code, you'll see it starts by setting an integer global variable ADC underscore ID and setting it to zero, which is for the analog pin zero. Then another integer history value, which is set to zero, and a 128 element char array print buffer. 
The void setup begins with a serial monitor. That's it. The void loop starts with a local variable value and sets it with an analog read from the ADC underscore ID or the analog zero pin. This is followed by an if statement checking if the history value is greater or equal to the current value and if the difference is greater than 10 or if the history value is less than the current value and the difference is greater than 10. If true, it uses an obscure function sprintf that concatenates all these various strings into an array print buffer. Then a serial print sends the value of the print buffer to the serial monitor. Finally, it sets the history value to equal the current value, and then it loops. I should point out that the sprintf function, unlike the C++ programming counterpart, doesn't handle floats very well. And I can't resist. Let's make a few changes to the code. First, I'll rename ADC underscore ID to sensor pin. And I'll use the alias A0 because that really makes it more readable. I'll add a few additional comments here to make things easier to find. I like comments. Next, the maximum number of chars that the print buffer will hold looks to be around 20. So let's change that array to 20. In the void loop, I'll rename the local variable value to be current value. Okay, let's examine the if statement. The comparison is true regardless if the history value is greater or less than the current value. So really why include it? What we want to know is if the difference is greater than 10. And I like to say greater than or equal to 10. And if it reaches zero, well, I also want to know that. An absolute value function will take care of any negative numbers, but the function doesn't like performing any math. So I'll create another local variable, diff value and set it to the difference of history value and the current value. Now the if statement compares the absolute value of the diff value and if it's greater than or equal to 10, or if the current value is zero, but if the history value is not equal to zero, it performs the remaining commands. Okay, another slight adjustment to the sprintf function, again to make things a little more readable, Oh, and I need to adjust the array length. Let's adjust it to 25. Hmm. Changing the sensor pin to alias A0 now shows a value of 14, which corresponds to the Arduino's D14, but I really want A0. So let's add a function to send back a, the proper string for the proper analog pin value when we send it the value between 14 and 19. Now I'll add a, a new global variable string analog pin. In the void setup, I'll set the analog pin using the analog pin converter, the new function I just created, passing the sensor pin value. Cool. Now changing the sprintf function to display the analog pin value. Unfortunately, I found out that I need to use this convert string method to make this work properly. Now it would be nice if the display result was a percentage. So I'll create yet another function to return the level percent value, I'm calling this level converter.
Then I discovered that tap water doesn't really conduct that well. So the value tops out around 350 or so. I'll add a new constant, Boolean tap water, and set it to true. In the level converter, I'll also add an optional Boolean is clean water and set it to true. So this function will assume tap water unless otherwise specified. And I'll add an additional check here to see if it is clean water. And I'll have a static integer max value that can auto adjust if the value comes up greater. Let's adjust uh, the S print F again to include this new percentage value. Oh, and I need to change that array length again. Let's adjust it to about 45. Ah, that looks better. Okay, let's upload the code and try it out. Okay, the code has changed a bit from the original tutorial, but the output still shows the pin value and raw output, as well as the percentage. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little about the water level detection sensor module and some of its limitations. If you like this sketch, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. I'll have additional links for other interesting videos and the code for this project in the show notes below. Join me next time for lesson 19, real time clock module. If you like this video, don't forget to rate and subscribe. Thanks, and see you next time.